I'm going to make networking very, very simple. It should be like turning on the faucet and the water just flows. You should be able to connect to anyone anywhere without having to think about it. And in emerging markets, this is particularly important because uh, people have so little access to information and have so much need for information. And providing them with that connectivity can really uh, allow them to gain that access and hopefully improve their economic uh, development and their economic status. For nearly two years, the networking group has been pursuing a collaborative multi-hop networking model for providing internet access in places where there may be only one or two internet gateways, such as a satellite link. To build out the network, nodes belonging to individuals cooperate with one another by forwarding each other's packets wirelessly to the internet gateway. The problem is quite complex, but we've broken it down into several components. So for example, capacity, range, self-management, quality of service, privacy, security are all parts that we are looking at. In current systems, at any given time, a radio can either send or receive a packet, but not both. This reduces the capacity in a multi-hop network because a forwarding node has to serialize both its reception and transmission. So instead of using a single radio platform, as in most systems, the networking group approach is to use multiple radios tuned to different frequency channels. Thus, a forwarding node can receive a new packet while transmitting an older one. One of the challenges we faced was how do we connect these nodes which are very far from one another? For example, 10 to 20 buildings away as opposed to, let's say, the next house or the next building over. Building on the idea of dual frequency meshes, this multi-radio architecture uses lower frequency radio wave transmissions. As more people join the network, the density of nodes increases and thus the distance between them decreases. When this happens, nodes automatically switch to higher frequency transmissions and thus higher bandwidths. In the last two years, we've been testing multi-radio, multi-hub meshes in several test beds, especially a 30-node test bed in our building, a 60-node test bed in another Microsoft building, and also in a Redmond residential complex. To increase overall throughput using multiple radios, researchers developed the Mesh Connectivity Layer, or MCL. MCL implements a Layer 2.5 routing protocol it selects the best radio on every node and the best path between any two nodes on the network. This, researchers have found, outperforms the current state-of-the-art routing protocol. Our researchers have really been thinking in terms of the emerging market and thinking about how we design networks that can be easily deployed and that are self-maintaining and self-repairing. But these same characteristics, obviously, would be of great benefit to enterprises everywhere in the world. If the nodes could reconfigure themselves, there are two primary advantages. One is the impact to the user will be greatly reduced, and the second advantage would be the financial impact of not having a trained network operators around the clock. The networking group and Microsoft Research is looking out into the future and really trying to solve some very fundamental problems about networking. The problem is complex and important one. People from government, industry and academia have to come together if you have to truly solve it. We are reaching out to the communities to look at these problems and go after them collaboratively. Clearly providing ubiquitous connectivity to people is not an answer in itself. But hopefully, it'll do just a little bit to accelerate economic development for people worldwide. <laughs>